Come on, man. I'm a figure, not a doctor. Here's your look at the brand new Hyatt Toys Star Trek 2009 exquisite mini series, McCoy. This brand new Dr. McCoy action figure stands 105 millimeters tall and faithfully reproduces his appearance from Star Trek 2009. He is dressed in the iconic blue uniform representing medical and science personnel, the Starfleet emblem on his clothes, the meticulously crafted two medicine bottles, and medical equipment accessories are all finely detailed, capturing the essence of his character even at the 118th scale. Well, you may not see him anywhere near a transporter, but if you wait long enough to the third quarter of 2024, you'll see the exquisite mini series of bones popping up online for around $24.99. I'd like, if I can, to thank the folks over at Hyatt Toys that did make this review possible by sending over the sample of bones we could have a look at. We've already now looked at Kirk, then we looked at Spock, now we're moving our focus over to McCoy. The figure, though, is going to stand at around the same size at 4 inches in height. Or Dr. McCoy is going to stand at 10 centimeters tall. As for the trekking trio, here's what the figure looks like with Captain James T. Kirk, and here's what he looks like with Spock. Sharing very similar Starfleet suits as Spock, both of the figures, actually, Spock and Bones, are similar in size. They're still a little bit shorter, though, than Kirk. I keep looking at them, thinking that maybe there's something else that they've added to Kirk, and it can't simply just be his hair. The length of the suits are the same. It looks like maybe the length of the legs are also the same, and yet, though, Kirk is taller than both of them. Uh, one of the fun little comparisons I thought it would also be, even though we don't really have a movie version of him yet, is to bring in Judge Dredd. Judge Dredd also was released from the folks over at Haya. And speaking, though, of this, as a personal fan of the Dredd film, I would love if they could start branching out into the film verse. We've gotten a whole lot of comic Dreads. Let's branch into the movie verse where we could get either the Carl Urban version of him or even, dare I say, Sylvester Stallone. So if you are expecting similar accessories with Bones, you might be surprised to see that this surgeon does have other things that uh, weren't already offered with Kirk and Spock. Sure, yes, the figure does still come include the same display stand. Really, again, no different than... I'm not going to bring in both of them just because, again, they're identical to one another. But same sort of view screens Still wish that these could have been transporter pads because I think it would just have made most sense. Obviously, if you're going to have these figures standing on top of display stands, wouldn't transporter pads make the most sense? Anyways, though, if you look at the bottom of these, you can see that there's open canals here. There's two here. There's two here. And again, it's just going to rinse and repeat all the way around. You get yourself as well these eye brackets. And so far up to this point, I've been two for two that the eye brackets have been really tight. Smart me would have just decided to use the same eye brackets and not tell any of you, but I wanted to at least use the ones that came included with the figures. Give the call, let's try, they say. Yeah, first time, first time doing this, by the way, and yeah, it just seems like these are really tight. I don't know what it is. I mean, the eye brackets haven't changed. Maybe the molding around it has changed. They're just really, really tight. What I could always really do, though, is also use the eye brackets we've gotten from other figure releases from Haya. I don't know, maybe that's the thing that's causing this conflict. I mean, it looks like... Maybe they are just a little bit wider, and maybe that's one of the reasons why these aren't attaching as well as they should. But the idea, though, in mind is obviously you can take them this way and just continue your merry little way until you go down the street with a whole bunch of these. Or you can also go on this side. You can, uh, again, I'm stating the, all the obvious things. Uh, one of the things, though, I did want to mention to you guys is the fact, again, like Carl Urban's uh, bones does come include some rather different things that weren't already packed with Spock and, and Kirk. If you had picked up Kirk, or you're planning to pick up Kirk because they haven't come out yet, both of them come include with a type. I don't know if this would be a Type 2 phaser. It's a silly phaser online or on the on the screen because the front of it flips around. I've already mentioned this a couple of times. I'm not a big fan of this phaser. Um, I wasn't also really a fan of the communicator. And it sort of seems like there's a following trend here. Generally, I don't like the designs, honestly, of the Star Trek 2009 film. The Enterprise, I thought it looked a little ugly. I think also kind of the Starfleet-issued weapons and uh, equipment, I think, are a little on the uglier side, too. I mean, I will say, though, for the size that they are, they replicated them nicely enough, even though I'm not a big fan of their designs. If you're looking at these, though, and you're expecting them with bones, you're going to be disappointed. Neither one of these actually are coming in clue with the figure. What he actually gets, though, instead is he gets himself a travel pack. Now, we were talking earlier about the belt, if you looked at those other two reviews. The belts weren't made of the same type of material. They were actually used of a little more of a harder plastic. This is kind of really more of the ideal kind of plastic that they should have really used for the belts. Just because with those belts, I just happen to have one right over here, the plastic def does seem like it's a little thicker if you're comparing the two. I just feel like they would have attached a whole lot easier if they were using the softer plastic. 
You get some though, like a little medic pack. Not really much in the way of paint, but you can take that and you just put it over top of his head. So you just run it up the shoulder and then just get it around his head. There we go. And just run it off to the side of his body. This one sort of did have me stumped. The figure comes included with, I believe, to be a, a, a tricorder. Now, again, not really loving the designs of these in the movies. The tricorder, if this is what it is, is a little bit more simple. It kind of looks more like a communication device than anything else, so I could be even wrong by that. It gets a holster. Now, here's the part that has me scratching. I just don't know where this is supposed to go. I get the idea that at least this is supposed to be holstered inside here, but then once I got this in here, what am I supposed to do with this? If you look at the figure, and again, I just bring his arms up. Nowhere on the figure's body can I see. There's a slot. There's a section. There's even an embedded magnet that this would, in, per, in practical purpose, would actually attach to his body. I can't see anything. Yeah, nothing Nothing is attracting this to the plastic. So I'm not sure why specifically they gave him like a holster for this if there's no real place to store this on the figure's body. I even thought down below, maybe on the boots. But no, no, it doesn't, doesn't attach there either. One thing, though, that will be lost if I'm not too careful is the figure comes included. Now, online, though, they actually listed these as medical bottles. I thought they were actually more hyper sprays myself. You get a silver one, and then you get, like, a copper-colored one. Very, very small, though. I mean, it's it's almost next to impossible to show you guys what this looks like just because of how tiny these things are. But you get a copper one. You get a silver one. I would have honestly just called them hypo sprays, but apparently online they, they list them as medical bottles. I've already taken the liberty of swapping out the hand that is good for holding these, although even then, just to get this in his hand, I'm not going to jinx myself by saying anything, but yeah, you kind of have to really put some serious pressure in there for him to properly hold this. At least he has himself a medical tool, and then if you want to, you can also take yourself, which again, I'm going to assume this to be the tricorder, just get this out of this holster, and he does have you know, somewhat of a hand to hold this, although the hand that he gets is basically just a relaxed hand. So you're not going to have the easiest job of him holding this. You kind of want to just have the palm facing up like this and then sort of hold, just holster, not even just even holstering, just have him resting the tricorder on his hand. And now he does also come included, to be fair, with some other swappable hands, but neither really one of these. Maybe this one might be the better one because the thumb's sticking a little bit further out. Uh, yeah, taking this, just putting the tricorder in his hand. That's, no, no, that's not going to hold either either way. Just get that in his hand. The hand just needed that much more of a grip. And then I think he would have probably been able to hold it. He holds it. Okay, there we go. So this is much better of a hand to hold. Um, he also comes included with another relaxed hand, which I've already taken the liberty of removing in order for him to hold the hyper spray. So Bones does get some other things that weren't packed with the other two figures. Let's carefully remove this because I know I'm going to drop this. And we'll go ahead and take the medic pack off his head as well and slide that off the side of his shoulder. So I, I was a big fan of Carl, Carl Urban's McCoy in the in the Star Trek films. It actually is one of my favorite characters in the films, and I thought he was perfectly cast. I feel like he sort of gets robbed, unfortunately, here with what I feel to be what could have been a perfect likeness. If to bring back in uh, Spock, and obviously to bring back in Kirk, I hate to say that I, I almost feel like McCoy might be the weakest of the three head sculpts. Not that the head sculpt isn't there, but again, like I feel like the paint is probably the one things that are causing the face sculpt to not look 100% right. I mean, all of them sort of have the same sort of issues. They have really light colored paint, and they also add all this additional pink on the cheeks. It wasn't as bad for Kirk, and I don't feel it really was as bad for Spock, because they, it still looked a lot like the actors. But I feel like perhaps, maybe with McCoy, he might be the weakest of the three. Uniform standpoint, they are exactly the same, so if I just bring back put Kirk down for a second, bring back in Spock, you can see. Uh, uniforms are exactly the same. Uh, the stripes on their sleeves, they didn't have to change at all either because they share the two as well. Same similar pants, same color, same deco, same again like the symbol there on the side corner, which by the way, I don't know if I even mentioned in the other two reviews, the symbol, Starfleet symbol is actually lifted. It's sculpted in place and if you look at really this closely, there seems to be a symbol on the actual well, insignia Got some nice panel lining there as well. This is, again, using all the soft plastic for the top of his torso. Um, this also does give him a more decent levels of posability. Although, again, I just feel like it's disappointing that his head sculpt just isn't as good because I'm such a big fan of McCoy in the films. Speaking, though, of his articulation, though, starting with his head, the head's going to be on a ball joint. Even though looking at it, it looks like it only just swivels all the way around. 
It's not until you actually start to bend the head up and down do you realize that there's actually a ball joint just below the collar. So the head does look up and down. The only thing about it though is when you move his head up, just by the nature of the softer plastic around it, it tends to push his head back down. So you move it up and you can probably see it starts to kind of rest itself back in a neutral position. Head does rock back and forth as well. You can take the arms and rotate them all the way around. The arms come out at 90 degrees. And there is no swivel here in the bicep, but what there is though, at least, is a swivel here. That same swivel also affords the elbow a bend. You can also take the hands and rotate them all the way around. The upper torso is gonna be on a ball joint. The legs split out. And something I did introduce in the review of Spock is that you can also drop these legs down as well if you want. So it just gives them a little more higher of a reach. Especially if they're running on a foreign planet. I mean, it just seems like in the J.J. Abrams universe, Kirk, more specifically Kirk, was getting into trouble. And poor Bones usually got tagged along in the way. Um, like I said, his legs do go forward and back. There's a double bend at the knee. That There's, of course, the articulation there in the ankle. This rocks back and forth. And like with the cases of the other two figures, there's, of course, peggles on the bottoms of his feet. While I do really think that Bones is... I don't even think I know. Bones was my favorite of the J.J. Abrams universe. It's a shame, though, really, that the figure comes up a little bit short when it comes to the way his likeness is. I, I think I have to believe that underneath this paint is a likeness that looks a lot more like Carl. Unfortunately, though, by adding the paint that the way they did, or maybe just painting it the color that they did, it, I feel like with all the three figures, now again, this is the wrapping up the reviews of what we've gotten so far from the Exquisite Mini series. all three figures, truthfully, have good-looking likenesses. I think, if anything, the way that they were painted, maybe too light of a complexion, is maybe the thing that robs their likeness being a little bit more movie accurate. I think Kirk is probably still the strongest, probably then Spock, and I hate to be in the order of what I've got them in right now. McCoy, again, comes up just a little bit short. One thing that's good, though, at least with, with McCoy, is that he comes included with accessories that weren't found already with Kirk and Spock. He gets, again, his medical pack. He gets a couple of hypo sprays, which I know I'm just going to lose. And he also comes included what I'm guessing to be his tricorder. Still don't know, though, why this uh, holster was coming included, because again, like, there's nothing on the back, there's no indication of a magnet, there's no hook or anywhere that looks like it would attach onto his body, so while they do include a holster, it's sure fine and good that you can actually take the little device and store it inside there. Once you got it stored inside, there's no place, unfortunately, it seems, to put on the actual figure. So doing a little looking online, and sure enough, that is the Star Trek 2009 medical tricorder that comes included with McCoy, which makes the most sense. And then logically, I would imagine the other thing that he has in his hand right now isn't a hypo spray as originally assumed. It, in fact, is the scanning device that goes along with the medical tricorder. Why did everything in the J.J. Abrams had to look so simple? I mean, you'll never really beat the original classic series tricorder or the one that we got from the next generation that had the flip out bottom. This medical tricorder sort of just looked like something you would see in, in like an art museum as a communication device. Either way, though, the medical tricorder does come include with a holster. It still puzzles me, though, that the holster has no place that I can find on the figure that actually attaches it. If there isn't a place to attach it, the question then asks is why would they include a holster in the first place? I'm only, if anything, going to have the tricorder in his hand. The holster is only just going to ultimately go back in a bag with all the other accessories that I'm not planning to display with the figures. Speaking of displaying, obviously like the other two, Bones comes included with a display stand. I seem to be though three for three trying to get the eye brackets attached into those slots. I don't think it's the eye brackets that have changed, but I think the slots where those brackets should go, I think have been a little bit more narrower on the releases of the Star Trek exquisite minis than in earlier instances before. One good thing though about McCoy, if you don't like necessarily the 118th scale, you're just not into collecting smaller scale figures, the, trek the trios of Trekkers will all be getting as well the exquisite Super Series treatment. Kirk and, S and Spock will be getting them as well as McCoy. I think all three of them are also slated to drop in November 2024. So if you like what High is doing with Star Trek, but you like your figures just to be a little bit bigger and dressed in real fabric, all three of them are going to be getting the exquisite Super Series treatment, like I said, in November for around 103 about $104 all in. Uh, big thank you once again to the folks over at Hyatt Toys that did provide the sample of the brand new Star Trek 2009. This was the 118th scale exquisite mini series of Dr. McCoy, or Bones if you prefer. What do you guys think of the figure line? Let me know down below in the comments section. Could you see yourselves picking up any of these when they eventually drop in the third quarter? Or would you rather invest instead and get the exquisite Super Series? Let me know down below. Also, for your video question for today, of all the cast that was, of all the characters, all the actors that were cast in the Star Trek film, 
What would you say was the best cast, the best casting? I still think Carl Urban for Dr. McCoy. Now I'm talking the new trilogy, not the original stuff. Of the new trilogy, who do you think was the best cast actor or actress for their role? Let me know down below. If in the meantime, you guys did enjoy this video, do it a solid throw to like. You guys want to stick around for more so? I hope so. Hit that subscribe, turn on that bell, and of course, come back. As always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.